thing warmed up. And make sure it's running. I think it is running. And we were talking to Peter Damien. Uh -huh. Peter Damien, the sure. musician who's been out here in Venice Beach for quite some time. And this is part. I've been out here for, I have been out here on Venice Beach for roughly 33 years. I only tell people 30 just to keep it even. But it's fun, it's still fun to play music. You don't make much money, but you can make music. That's what your life is. It's what, it's what my, what I would like my life to be. All music and, and, and being nice to, to human beings on this planet. Now, this is going to be... Sorry about that. This is going to be a part of our Venice Beach and Oral History. Okay. All right. And I've got a bunch of questions here. All right. For you, Peter. And I'd like to know, first of all. Yes. We're going to ask everybody these questions and then kind of bury them. Okay. Um, and if, any, if we make any money off of uh, this, then you will be a. Uh, I'll be author. part of it. That's, you will. Listen, you know, that's, that, that's okay if we don't make any money. This audio. Uh, to get the history out there is still important. This audio. Constitutes that agreement between us. Okay. All right. So now, when did you get here? Yeah, I got here in 1979. All right. I, I, I got to California in 1970, maybe 1969. But I was in the San Fernando Valley for a couple of years. I became a, a sing, what they call a singing busboy in a restaurant called Poppy Star in Encino and Balboa, quite an expensive area. I lived in my car for, uh, and then uh, on Mulholland Drive, I was sleeping in my car and a policeman stopped me, or, or I stopped, stopped where I was sleeping and said, what do you do, young man? I said, I, pl I play music officer, and he said, prove it. So as I break into the trunk of my car with a screwdriver, uh, I start talking to him and he goes, uh, he says, well, I started playing. I started playing for him. He said, uh, okay. And then he goes, stop. And I go, why? He said, see this Playboy Bunny in this magazine? I said, yes. He said, I, he said, I just give her a ticket. I said, in that case, uh, give me her phone number. I made him laugh. So the last thing he said to me, this is the last thing he said to me, if you believe in what you say you do, there's a place called Venice Beach. And I said to him, where the fuck is Venice Beach? He says, it's south of Santa Monica south of Santa Monica. I I came to LA, but I went to Santa Monica. I was pretty old. I mean, I'm pretty old now, but it, this is 30 years ago, 30, 40, 50 maybe. And I said, where is Venice Beach? He said, south. So I came to Venice Beach in 1979. I lived in the parking lot here at Rose for about a year and a half, maybe two. It's a parking lot way, way in the very far, far north as far as I could go. And I've been singing on Ocean Front Walk ever since with the concept of Street Smart, musical Street Smart. Somebody said to me, what's the name of your band? I said, Street Stupid, Street Slick, Street Sleaze, uh, street, uh, street Scum, Street Smart. And I said, ah, Street Smart. I like that. Why? Because when you take the S and M off smart, you got art. The art of love, the art of music, the art of dying, the art of eating, all that, you know, that, the, the art, the arts that involve every creation on the planet of, of, our, of our lives. Now, uh, so you've been here ever since? Yes, I have. And it was basically that policeman that decided to, made you decide to come here, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, he, he, he sort of, I wanted to play here, you know, I wanted to perform and be part of music out here. And I really didn't, didn't know where, where, where to be part of music. But Venice Beach has allowed me uh, the essence of, of singing a song, playing for people, which I extremely uh, love and enjoy. It's my therapy. It's my escape tool. It's what, whatever it is. Now what is it you like about Venice Beach? Uh, the, uh, the Venice is dysfunctional. I'm pretty dysfunctional. So it's pretty dysfunctional. And the fact that you can play on the ocean front walk, this is the last street on the Western Hemisphere in North America where you can play music and you're not harassed too much. And then after that, it's China. That's it right there. 
You gotta go across the Pacific Ocean. This is the last street on the Western Hemisphere. Now, has Venice Beach changed much since you've been here? Of course. Of and course, it changed. It has changed because the extreme rich people are gonna buy everything up. And then how it's gonna change, I don't know. When the musician is asked to leave, that will be a huge, big change when the musician is asked to leave. So when that happens, you know, then then Venice will not be Venice anymore. It was built for, it was made for artists, according to Abbott Kenny, it was made for uh, artists. It's extremely uh, expensive. Here we go, we got the, you know, the patrols. Uh, it's extremely expensive to live here. I lived in the canals for seven years, seven years in the Venice canals. There used to be 29 miles of canals. There's only three miles left. I see. And there was 29 miles when you got here, huh? No, there was not. Oh. At that point, there was only three. I see. So, so it was still, still beautiful. But it was cheap. I could live, live there with my girlfriend for $400 a month. Now you have to have $500,000 just to have a piece of property in the canals. Never mind building something. Right. Yeah, so everything changes. That's the nature of life. Have you got a favorite story of Venice Beach that you think uh, think of makes you think of Venice Beach? Something that would happen here, something that happened here that might not happen, happen in other places? Well, well, let me just say that Venice uh, is a funny place. It, uh, it's, it's, this is a story, but it's mingled with everything else. It's where the debris meets the sea. <laughs> and if you think that you're somebody special or somebody brilliant or great, come out here, put out your hat, and whatever you do, if you're a mime or thing, or you're a storyteller, you're a fortune teller, or a musician, a card, card juggler guy, a guy with the pea pods, then you come out here and the, the, the people on the weekends or the weekdays will tell you what you are or what you aren't. But if you believe in what you say you do, then constantly do what you love. And that's, that's the magic of Venice Beach. That right? is the magic of Venice Beach. It's, a, I mean, this is wh where I'm from. I'm a, a Canadian. I'm Ontario, Ontario, Canada. It's 40 below. You can't play your guitar in 40 below. You'd have to drink a lot of schnapps to play your guitar. But here you can play every day. Like today is Wednesday. I'm out here playing. I have played. I have played here at one point. There was a time in my life that I played for 13 years, seven days a week in front of the Fig Tree Cafe. That's Paloma and Oceanfront Walk. 13 years of my life, every day, seven days a week, I played music. I wasn't a married man then. I was a single man. So, so every, hey, go ahead. everything changes when you become married. I don't forget, I always get the last word in my relationship. Yes, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, honey. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, you're right, honey. We are, you're right. Well, here's here's the strange I'm sorry, thing. Honey. Yeah. Sorry, honey. No, no, it's, you're <laughs> right. It's the best one. Yeah. Uh, I was doing. I did. I hauled trash and moved furniture for a while. And as I'm doing a trash job one day, these um, Italians are all sitting around. They're 50, 60, 70 years old. And I said to them, "Tell me the magic of you guys being." married for like 40, 50 years. They looked me in the face and they said, shit sandwiches taste great. <laughs> <laughs> and I immediately got it. I got it. I smiled and I got it. So, so you know. All right, I got another question for you. All right. Um, so, um, you think Venice Beach is, uh, I mean, people are still coming to Venice Beach. Absolutely. So you think Venice Beach still has a, like a dream connected to it? It, 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 is, it is, it is like, it is, uh, I, I, let me be careful of what I say. It's probably the dream capital of the world. You know, you have Disneyland where, you know, you know, Walt Disney created things for children. But, but Venice is still uh, a dream. Uh, I've met a lot of people that have come here uh, and made it from here. Uh, Ted Hawkins is one that made it here. He was asked by Geffen Records uh, to, to come. The people from Geffen Records came in. Ted Hawkins, uh, there's the gold man that used to set up. See? Las Vegas, he went to Vegas. He's the gold man. He just went by. You see him? He's all oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
should interview him. I think he went to Vegas. Oh. I'm not sure if there's two of them or, you know. But you can, you know, uh, if you believe in what you say you do, you may experience some form of adulation here. Do you think that uh, all the money coming in here is going to ruin the dream? Or do you think it's yes. just going to grow the dream and make it different? It's going to, it won't ruin the dream, it'll, it'll change the concept, you know. Uh, let me say something uh, philosophical. I think what has happened to America in general is greed has taken over. Uh, 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 I'm, look, let me think of the word. Let me think. I'm thinking of the word. Wow, I'm flipping out. Uh, compassion, compassion has lost, lost itself here. Greed has taken over here. When I came here, I have a little son. I had a son. I have a son, and he's now much older. But when I came here, the schools were the very best in all of the United States. California, the state of California was the very best. The schools were the very best. Now the schools are the worst. Why? Because greed has come in. When greed comes in, compassion goes out the window. It's like, I'm not compassionate to you. You need a dollar? Hey, I got it. You know, what's a dollar? Here's a dollar. You go, wait a minute, that dollar's mine. And so, so if you lose compassion, then something else takes place and the money has taken place here. Well, you don't think the money will ruin it, but it will change it. It may ruin it. May I can't say it. that it won't, won't. You know, it may ruin it, but it was created by Abbott Kenny for for artists and poets. Now, now I've heard once it hurt, uh, hurt my feelings. Uh, it was called oceanfront schlop, or you know, when when you sh uh, schlop clothes or you know, schmatas and stuff. Right. So there was like that kind of stuff out here. And I was heartbroken on some level, but then I realized, you know what? If you could come on this, the, 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 the west side and not pay for a spot, and not, not pay for a spot, then it's okay. But there's, see, there's a conflict of interest here. The west side, nobody pays for their little spots. On the east side, everybody pays a fortune for rent. So you gotta, you gotta, uh, immediately. I sat down in front of the fig tree a long time ago and, and somebody said, oh, look, free money. And I, yeah, free money, yeah. I've been working, playing music all my life and you figure that you consider this free money. I mean, you, don't, you don't know the time that I've spent practicing uh, in the dark under a stairwell, playing for old people, blind people, deaf people, anybody let me play, I'd play. But when people see free money in their, your guitar case, they go, oh, wow, it's free. Right. So that's what's, that's what's happened, you know. You have a conflict of interest. The waiters that work in these restaurants and bars, they think that that dollar that comes into your case should go to them because they're working there. So, see, there's instantly a conflict of interest created on the oceanfront walk. Mm -hmm. Yet it still is a beautiful place to come to. You can come here for like, say, say 25 bucks and have your whole family have a good time up and down. You go to Disneyland, you, you'll spend $125 for each person. Right. So you're gonna be here till you till the day you die. You yes, think? I'd like to be. Yeah. If people let me. I'll, you know, I'll uh, slump, slump, uh, like slump over my guitar. <laughs> well, thank you very much for talking to us, Peter. Thank you. And, uh, we'll uh, look forward to uh, seeing other kind of stories, and I'll let you know how it goes. That's great. And, uh, I, hopefully, I we'll all make a million dollars. Hey, listen, <laughs> let's make let's make art. Let's make art. Sometimes we can't make a million dollars. But if we can make art, then that will will serve our souls well, that we can do. and soothe our hearts. That we can do. Thank right. you very much. Thank you.